Hello, everybody. My name is Priscilla Stone. I am the host of Quantum Witch Cafe, and I just want to say thank you to the organizers of this event, uh, Ryan Sprague, anybody that helped him, and also to the other speakers. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Today, I'm going to be talking about dream experiences and contacts. Now, this is a controversial issue. This is a controversial topic because dreams aren't exactly what we would consider reality, and science doesn't consider them reality either. What does dream contact mean in the relation to the experiencer is my big question. Um, before I get into the slides, I just want to say that uh, the slides look great on PowerPoint. They look great in everything else. But when I'm uploading them in presentation mode, my words are getting scrambled. So I'm going to apologize for some of the slide words being sort of like off center. So sorry, OCD people. <laughs> Um, to answer what dreams are and what they mean in relation to experiencer, we must ask the dream, what is it? Types of common dream experiences reported, hypnagogia, hypnagogia and oniric recall, sleep paralysis, what it is and isn't, reality needs to be talked about, and we also need to talk about physical evidence after a dream. And also, can consciousness be hijacked? Because we see these entities often showing people similar things or completely different things. And they also communicate telepathically in many instances. So what does that have to do with consciousness in relation to dreams? And do these entities operate within our set parameters of expectation and reality? And finally, what can we do about this? Is there anything we can do to differentiate between a normal dream versus a dream that we might want to pay attention to? So um, why do I get to talk about this? My name is Priscilla Stone, and I am a host of a podcast called Quantum Witch Cafe. I'm also um, one of the disclosure ladies, which you can find on Instagram. And on my podcast, Quantum Witch Cafe, I discuss UFO, UIP books, paranormal and fringe topics. I'm an advocate for the ending of UIP secrecy as well as an advocate for the experiencer and the ending of stigma, stigma associated with anything in any of these topics. I'm also a mother, a military wife, a science major with a background in molecular bio and have just begun studying planetary and astronomical science. And as if that wasn't complicated enough, I'm also a witch. But before I was any of that knowingly, I became an experiencer at a very early age. My dreams had become had been vivid, lucid, and, and I've had full of contact in my dreams for as long as I can remember. This sometimes terrifying gift was exasperated by my first UFO sighting when I was five years old. Dream contact became part of my life permanently. And for some reason, this has become my vibe. So much so that people come to me after they've had strange dreams and dream contact encounters that scare the crap out of them. But um, because of this, I've developed a passion for dreaming and questioning how the phenomena interacts with us in dream states. So what is a dream? That is a loaded question, but let's start with a brief scientific explanation. This is the definition of dream. It's a series of thoughts, images, sensations occurring in a person's mind during sleep. This definition is from Oxford, but you will find a similar and almost exact definition other places as well. So this is where my slides start getting crazy. I apologize. Uh, dreams happen all night. They happen in intervals of five to 20 minutes. They're mostly vivid in REM sleep and they are believed to be a collection of images gathered from everything that your eyes have seen throughout the course of your life, both consciously and subconsciously. This includes TV, like literally the second you open your eyes, your brain is recording these memories. This makes interpretation and quantification of dream happenings very difficult and again, very controversial. There are five main stages of sleep. W is wake and alert. This is your beta waves. They're very high frequency. They're low amplitude though. And once you're drowsy, alpha waves come in and alpha waves are also there during meditation and deep relaxation. The next stage is N1, which is 5% of the time. This is your light sleep. 5% of the time you're in this, beta waves, this is memory recall or recall of the day, fa fantasy, imagery, creativity, and this is where you gain access to your subconscious. And between N1 and N2, we enter a state called hypnagogia, and this is 45% of the time. Sleep spindles and K complexes are observed in EEG readings, which are 
kind of associated with different types of memory recall. Um, memories are consolidated during this time and they're formed and learning takes place. In N3 is your deepest non-REM sleep, but 25% of your sleep happens here. Delta waves, they give you access to the unconscious. This also happens to some people during trance. This is your restorative sleep. This is where sleepwalking and night terrors occur. And in REM sleep, 25% of the time, your skeletal muscles tend to stop moving. Um, you become atonic, so you can't really move everything. And this is where a lot of dreaming occurs. So these are the different brain waves. And once again, I apologize for the slide doing what it's doing when I upload it to present mode. But um, I want to touch on the different types of brain waves. The sleep spindles and K complex that are recorded in EEG readings are associated with memory consolidation primarily procedural and declarative memory and cave complex are basically long delta waves. So hypnagogic hallucinations will happen, lucid dreaming happens during these N1s and N2s. So now we're finally getting to the whole reason that I'm even curious about any of this is, you know, enter the experiencer. These people that have had all sorts of different dream experiences some terrifying, some beautiful. And they've been told, hey, it's just a dream. Just a dream, you'll be fine. <laughs> so in my experience of reading different types of people's dreams and also people coming to me, writing to me about their dreams, talking to me about their dreams, and also a compilation of dreams I've experienced myself, these are the types of dreams that experiencers report. Um, and when I say entities, this is not just what people would think of as ETs or your traditional greys or your traditional mantis. Um, entity visits are the first type of dream that they experience. There's also abduction dreams. Details uh, come back to them during dreams about abductions or there's some sort of actual abduction happening within the dream. And there's another type of dream that happens where they kind of go aboard willingly. This is different from abduction because abduction is something that happens to people against their will. This is the type that is very terrifying to people. Um, they're being pulled out of their bed and they can't move or they're being led out of their room through the wall even sometimes or even in this like sleep paralysis state. And it's very scary to them. But there's also instances where people go willingly with these different entities aboard a ship or to another place completely. Another type of dream that experiencers report is leaving the body, um, which is otherwise known as astral travel. When I say leaving the body, their consciousness or their astral body, sometimes people say those are different. Some say they're synonymous, but it will leave their body and they'll kind of float around to different realms. Some people just float around their house but basically they see themselves on the bed still. And sometimes they go and meet with different entities or there's an entity waiting for them after they leave their body. It's kind of like an out of body experience or it is an out of body experience. Um, people have animals or spirit guide dreams. These are sort of those, um, you know, dreams where you'll meet up with like an animal and it'll give you a message or some sort of entity as a guide. And then there's the normal day-to-day -day dreams. I went to the store, I got milk, I came home, and then you wake up and you're like, why did I dream about the store? That was ridiculous. <laughs> what a waste of a dream time, right? So those are kind of like the normal day-to-day -day dreams that, that some people have. And those are not the ones that people worry about. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the hypnagogic state um, and oniric recall, because there's a series of events that seems to take place for experiencers. So usually um, there's some sort of event that happens and the event, I'm gonna say there's an exception. Some people are having dream experiences before this event happens, but that's not 
what happens common. That's not a common thing to happen. Usually there's an event like a UFO sighting, a spirit visitation, or some sort of trauma um, happens to the person. And this is kind of just like the event that triggers everything. This usually after this event, some sort of paranormal activity will happen. Um, they might experience objects moving around their house, shadow figures during waking time, or they'll have these dreams about entities that are extremely terrifying. And it's those dreams that people say it was so real, though. You know, it was so real. Like, I know sleep paralysis is a thing, but this was so real. These are the types of dreams where people wake up and they literally know they're awake, but there is some sort of entity preventing them from waking up or moving their body completely. So there's some sort of paranormal activity that takes place around these events. And then there's the Oniric recall that happens. Um, Oniric phenomenon, phenomenon portraying entity visitation happens. Abduction events such as um, in the case of Betty and Barney Hill or Leah Haley, they had dreams portraying parts of their abductions coming back to them. So these people are having these like memories come back in their dreams. And the big question is, you know, are these screen memories or is this a memory from an actual event? And that's why you have to take each little piece and put it together. The event, you know, the UFO sighting with missing time, the um, entity that you see in the woods, and then you have some sort of sleep paralysis event that night that leads to dreams about entities. And then you wake up and you have physical symptoms or something. And of course, you know, they did some studies because this all sounds bonkers, right? This sounds, this doesn't sound right. Like your, your dreams are just dreams. That's it. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. We hear it over and over and over again. And there, these are two pictures of the two main articles that people are citing sleep paralysis, sexual abuse, and space alien abductions, or alien abductions, a medical hypothesis. So basically what these kind of said is that sleep paralysis is just medical memories, like, you know, a memory of you going to the, uh, you went to the dentist, and now that's being turned into some sort of dream where you're on a examination table with entities around you. Um, or you saw a movie and now your brain is putting that all together. And, or it's just plain old sleep paralysis. Like we talked about when you enter the state where your body literally doesn't move when you're sleeping. So um, they wanted to say that's what this was. They wanted to say, you know, this is it. So with Betty and Barney Hill, they had memories coming back and what I want to talk about, you know, before I even go on further into that is the hypnagogic state is where a lot of this happens. Uh, hypnagogia occurs during the transitional period of wakefulness to sleep when alpha waves are decreasing, but you haven't reached the first stage of sleep. And this is where there's an increase in lucid dreams, sleep paralysis, and everything associated with it, hallucinations, hypervigilance, etc., but it also accounts for oniric recall. So I just needed to go back to that. Um, but my question is, you know, if this is, this is all fine, you know, sleep paralysis happens, but with an experiencer that has had that key event happen or that initial event happen to them, there's more to it. A person that gets sleep paralysis is very afraid when they wake up. It's a very harrowing experience. However, if you have a sleep paralysis event, where there's an entity working on you or taking you and you wake up and you have physical markings on yourself or physical symptoms. Is this a mind over matter thing or is our brain really that powerful where it's going to leave people with physical symptoms? A lot of people that are experiencers that have had the abane event, such as a sighting or spirit visitation or even a trauma, will start having sleep paralysis. And trauma in real life can start triggering nightmares, of course, and it can start triggering sleep paralysis events. But the difference is if it's just sleep paralysis, you're probably not going to wake up with things that people talk about when they talk about being 
visited by certain types of entities. Now, this could be a spirit. This could be a non-human intelligence or ETs. Some people think they are. This could also be uh, a shadow being, uh, some sort of astral attack. These can all be normal nightmares, right? These can all be normal sleep paralysis. But how does that account for the people that come to me and the people that are out there that have these events and then wake up with markings on their arms where they were bound, physical sickness, like like full body pain, like they're getting ill, throwing up sometimes, and physical symptoms, I would say, waking up outside. <laughs> like you're going to have a dream episode or a dream experience or an experience of sleep paralysis where these entities take you and you're waking up somewhere else. So this is where we need to pay attention. And I do believe these cases are, you know, when it comes to sleep paralysis and abduction scenarios and sleep paralysis events where there are entities present, I'm not saying that they all will give you physical symptoms and that they're all going to have, you know, be related to a physical event. But um, when you have an event, you start having these sorts of dreams and you also have physical symptoms accompanying it, then you really have to start asking what is actually happening here. Because these people are actually starting to question their own realities, which brings me to the next question. And the next topic is reality. Reality is reality is reality. There's so many different definitions of reality. So we're taught that reality is just kind of like, this is what this is, you know, these things happen. This is what everybody knows. And reality refers to like our totality of existence, right? Encompassing all that's observable, tangible and experience. It encompasses the physical world, the laws governing it and the various phenomena and events that occur within it. Reality is often contrasted with illusion or subjective perceptions, representing the objective state of affairs that exists independently of individual thoughts or beliefs. And in philosophical terms, the nature of reality has been subject to contemplation and debate for centuries. Different philosophical perspectives offer varying interpretations of reality. And the reason I bring up reality is because for a lot of people, these dream visitations follow them into waking physical reality. But these are the different types of realities that people talk about. And I'm only highlighting this so you can see that there's so many different types of theories when it comes to what reality actually is. There's physicalism or materialism, the viewpoint that posits that reality is fundamentally composed of physical matter and energy. It suggests that everything in existence, including human consciousness, can ultimately be reduced to physical processes. So it's just brain reactions and chemicals and hormones, right? Idealism. Idealism argues that reality is primarily constituted by ideas, consciousness, or mental constructs. According to this perspective, the physical world is dependent on the mind or the consciousness perceiving it. So perception is reality. Dualism. Dualism asserts that reality consists of distinct entities, the physical and the non-physical, like the mind or the soul, um, and it suggests these entities interact and influence each other. And then constructivism is the perspective that holds reality is constructed by the shapes, by individual or collective perceptions, experiences, interpretations. It emphasizes the role of subjective human cognition in shaping our understanding of reality. And scientifically, this is all explored, right? Through empirical observation, experimentation. We know the scientific method. However, this might not apply to some of people's dream experiences. So, of course, when I'm talking to people and I'm talking to them, they're saying, no, I know the difference between a normal sleep paralysis versus a sleep paralysis that happened after this main event happened in my life that was either paranormal or traumatic or both. And, you know, in, in, in addition to that, I'm having the sleep paralysis, these entity attacks, these astral attacks, or these visitations, these contact dreams, and I'm waking up with physical symptoms. How can we even begin to ignore that? The science is sound for dreams, right? That's what they tell us. But why would a dream follow some people into physical reality, making them sick? 
And why would it bring go into reality and cause them actual harm, such as scoop marks, scarring, bruising, uh, emotional trauma beyond something that a nightmare about Freddy Krueger is going to bring you? So my question now is, should the, the memories and dreams be taken more seriously when combined with other factors in the person's life? The final thing, not the final thing, but one of the final things I want to talk about, and this is kind of how I say people should go about learning like the difference between an actual contact experience in a dream that's taking place, but presenting as a dream or um, just, you know, a regular lucid dream. And the best way that I can explain this is for people to actually learn how to lucid dream because through lucid dreaming, you are taught how to control your dream, how to step into a dream and take agency over what's happening. When you're in an actual contact scenario presenting itself as a dream contact or dream experience, lucid dreaming will not work. So a lot of people are saying like, how can I stop this? A lot of people are using different methods, but this is gonna be the more palatable way for people that are more science driven to kind of like help people through these sorts of dream experiences. People that are having dream contact and contact after dreams or contact and then dream contact or memories coming back during their dreams, these people are afraid and they're suffering. So. One way that I suggest, and I've helped a few people through these dream contact experiences, they begin to sort of question reality. Like we just talked about, there's so many different types of reality, right? That we learn about. There's so many takes on reality, so many theories on reality. But the reality for them is they're having these experiences and they're waking up and they're hurt from it, either, either emotionally or physically or both. Or sometimes it's for the better. Sometimes they're healed from it. So Lucid dreaming, if you're having these sorts of experiences, will sort of help you differentiate between that was a real dream or this was something different that I need to pay attention to. And so far for myself and a few other people that I know, this has really only been able to help them realize that there's more to it than it was just a dream. Sometimes it's not just a dream. And I'm not going to make any friends saying that in science land or nuts and bolts land. But I've talked to too many people to just ignore the fact that contact dream experiences may be more than we're being told or maybe more than we're able to understand at this moment in time. So um, here's my work cited. If you guys want a copy of that, please let me know. Um, and I can send you everything that I read about and everything that I studied as far as this goes. Um, yeah, I'm almost out of time. So that's all I wanted to talk about, dream contact and experiences. Please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, X, formerly Twitter, or even Facebook if you have a dream experience you'd like to talk about and kind of work through. Um, there's different methods to lucid dreaming we can get into another time. But until then, just thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Ryan, for doing this. You're amazing. And then thank you for all the other speakers. I can't wait to see your presentations. Have a great day or night, everyone.